Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back from an unsuspected pause in my normal schedule of things. I did think I have a lot more going on, but uh, that that was roughly goes in didn't really go too far. I guess I'm technically the winner because I was the only person in the semi-finals to actually attempt to organize a match. But anyway, we're here in a good old friend of a league with the UGA and I'm glad to be back. I've not had the best of runs like with my sword, my Scarlet Violet, sorry, draft leagues, but hoping to really claw back that victory with the with the one that really started it all um, back in UGA. Drafted a very fun team. As you can see, I, I got a Sun Core, got a Paris Trap Core, got a bit of everything, uh, and got some fun Pokemon I've never really played before, such as uh, Water Tauros and Quagsire. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully they can do well, of course. You know, just for luck, I get the Dondozo Tatsugiri player week one. So we have got a couple Pokemon that have got tools for it. Quagsire being Water Absorb and has Terra Flying, so it can't be hit. Um, but the Dondozo, it, no matter what moves it has, really. Would like to have gone unaware, but uh, I had to pick between one and two and War Absorb seemed a bit better. Clear Smog Focus Slash Torkoal to clear Smog away if it isn't Terra Steel. And if it is Terra Steel, we can just Heat Wave it in the sun. That's going to do a lot. Um, but yeah. I think I'm going to lead Fluttermane plus Torkoal, get that instant pressure down. And then I bring Quagsire in the back alongside Charizard. That seems like it could be fun. <laughs> I also hope this time around that I don't make any of the mistakes I've made in the past where I've put the wrong Pokemon in the wrong boxes. I should probably have checked that before the battle, but I'm in a bit of a rush with this one because of course Bukit, which is also going on right now, is, uh, is tonight. Uh, well, the time of reporting this is tonight. Um, yeah, we've got some special, uh, a good guest caster, I guess, main caster, but I guess one of our out of house casters coming in uh, for their for, for their debut, which is fun, but that'll be something about later. So, more Grand Iron Mouth, which is a lead I'm fine with. Like, we could see Light Screen. Watch me not have put Drought on top of Arcade, but <laughs> that's lucky, and I can't get it completely wrong on the other side. Um, honestly, like, minus a trash activation, this is closed Terra League. Uh, Quark Dark should be fine. I believe my speed should be boosted for Photosynthesis. I wasn't paying attention. Um, yeah, so I'm quite happy just going for Power Gem into the Moth and going for a Helping Hand. Uh, nothing really punishes that. I believe I should be faster, so I got speed boost as well from Photosynthesis. There's Light Screen, that's fine. With choice specs, this should still do a chunk. Oh, okay, doesn't quite get it, but that's, that's fine by me. Fiery Dance, okay, that's that's different. That doesn't get a knockout. I did cut for Overheat, and they didn't get the boost, which is super nice. Just gonna go for the Power Gem again. I don't really need the added bonus. And then go for a Heat Wave to kind of just throw damage down, really. We could see our Sash broken, but I'm not bothered. Protect, that's fine. We could see them, we could see main going down, but not much. Thunder Wave, okay, okay. That's annoying, but tolerable. Power Gem goes and Protect. Not so much Morgrem takes it. Morgrem is behind the light screen, and it's most likely carrying that Evil Light. Yeah, that's. That's baby damage. Um, honestly, power gym again. And then just go for another heat wave. Like, I think in the sun, like, even with light screen, heat wave could get the, um, could get the moth. Like, the moth is in that position where it's like, if it targets down Torkoal, yes, it breaks its sash, but it's leaving uh, Fluttermane to do nothing much. There's parting shot. Okay, so it's a. Parting shot variant, which we can deal with. So we had our sash broken, which is nice. Um, which could end up this turn. If we see Dondozo coming in, then we can just clay smock it to the pipe. High heavens. There's Gogo coming in, so Gogo's not gonna like this. Um, there's another fiery dance, because Nasta's gonna go into yeah, into the flutter, just, just sort of deal with it. And it gets a special attack boost, which is Which is a bit annoying, but But oh well. 
Here comes Heat Wave. Does it get a double? It doesn't. And Go Go tanks that. So Go Go, she turns out to be the Zoroark. Okay. Um, that's fine by me. Uh, I'll go with Charizard. That. Um, I think I can safely Terra Water here. Maybe. And then just go for Heat Wave again. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Terra Water, just take any fire type attacks from away a little bit, and possibly the, the rogue rock type attack. And honestly, I'd rather go for double heat wave because like then I just mitigate any chances of something going wrong and missing. If they if they have those in the back, I could be screwing myself over a little bit. Um, but we'll see. And we'll see how much terrible it pays off. Because even if those were in the back, we take the hit a bit better. There's the protect, so luckily we went for the double heat wave. Hyper voice, okay. That does a lot of damage on oh, a critical hit. See if the solar power breaks through. Yep, yeah, okay. Uh, that, that hyper voice putting a lot of pressure down isn't the nicest sight, but because it breaks our sash as well, so if Dondoso is there, we're relying heavily on the Pride Fire. In comes Gogo. -Go. Uh, I'm gonna go for Protect, and I'm just gonna go for Heat Wave again. Covers them off going into the Charizard. And here's their Terrestrialization. Probably the Gogo Terrestrializing just to take this Heat Wave even better. I'm assuming Water Type is the go to. Oh, Rock Type. Yeah, Rock Type is even better. Gives them, I guess, with a Terra Blast a uh, chance to hit the Torkoal. But just going for the tank, we could be seeing the tank going to that slot there. Let's see. Engineer, okay, that's good. So that's going to be annoying for Quagsire. So we, 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 we basically lost it here now because I I went for a bit of a premature terrestrialization. Okay, and so hopefully, talk about, yeah. Ah, I hate to see it. But that, that just pretty much seals the deal there. Like, Going for a premature terrestrialization and um, focusing too hard on the on what's in the field there. Quag's eyes is going to be nuked by an energy wall that throws into it, and like go go probably the ground attack as well. So really well positioned for my opponent, like really well navigating what can come uh, from my side, having that parting shot just to mitigate damage straight away, and just having that speed boost. Light screen's a bit annoying, and we can't really we can't really ignore what's coming from the Iron Moth. And, we, and like, because once it gets that speed boost and gets its ball rolling, it, it's really annoying. Um, I won't reveal anything, I'll just go for... I'll just go for a stomach tantrum that doesn't really reveal much, and they, they, they should just sneeze on me. There we go, there's a sneeze, it goes down. So, an annoying way to go out in that first one game, getting a little bit greedy with my trastalizations. Um, an acting force based on what's in the field. The the crit coming from the hyper voice didn't help either. So I have to work with what info we had had there. Yeah, about we got the same rules. I guess something we can maybe consider. Is just leading with my like double sun mode. So like leading plus Charizard plus Slaughter main. And that puts some the pressure where I can just possibly nuke the more grim without the main. And then I have the ability to throw a fight of attack into the other slot. I guess the only fear of that is if they just lead straight up Tatsu Dozo, I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. Uh, 
I'm gonna go with it. Bring Torkoal in the back and then bring Clodzara in the back. And I'm not gonna fall for that same mistake that I fell for where I force myself into terrastalization. Clod uh, Pyxire is a Pokemon that needs to be terrastalized in this match. It, it just takes the hits so well from all the Pokemon that can come its way. If we can pivot into that situation, that's amazing. I did also a prep very, very hard for the Noivern. Expecting that to come, but I guess just the sheer pressure that Fluttermane puts out, Noivern just wasn't really an option. There's more Remire Moth again, so pulling that quite well, so no... No straight Dozo Tatsu. Okay, um... Honestly, I'm gonna go straight from Moonblast into Morgrem. Just start covering that. And then Ancient Power into the Moth. There's the light screen, that's perfectly fine by me. There's Shadow Ball, that's gonna be annoying. It's not stabbed, but it's super effective just taking it. Ah, the special defense drop, that's gonna be annoying if we can't if we can't produce from here. Moonblast just misses a knockout as well, ancient power. Does minimal damage. That's because it wasn't the Iron Moth. That was that's a really good play from but that's why I love having Zoroark. That's why like I'm happy I got the I got uh, base Zoroark. Because that sheer factor of you can just have that instant pressure of Oh, is it the Pokemon I want? Is it not the Pokemon I want? That's gonna get annoying, but I think switching into Torkoal to preserve Fluttermane and just going for the uh, bread and the bread and butter heat wave. Oh, really well played my opponent that like playing like playing Zorog like that way it should be played in draft like and that is just using it as a tool to trick your opponents Torkoal coming in could be helpful because of the, because the speed interactions you also get the boost parting shot going it going to Charizard is going to be annoying especially with that light screen up and more grand beings like still being around is gonna annoy us. I think my opponent might have even played it very, very strategically and just not put a Dondozo mode whatsoever. In comes the Moth, which is gonna love taking a hit from this heat wave given its typing, even in the sun, and it's gonna get its quark drive boost as well, which I can't really deal with from the get-go. So again, my opponent just having that ability to pivot back and forth with with the pressure of just uh, hiding behind barrier. There's a shadow ball, so I believe that might be specs damage. Cause Zorak, I think. To get that sort of damage out, Torkoal's not the bulkiest, but I know Zorak has a lot of pressure coming out of it. Um, maybe we'll find out after after the match, we'll have to see. But this is super annoying, but we won't go for that same mistake. We won't force the Terra too early. So in comes Gogo, which is probably going to go for that Terra Rock to take the move a bit better. So I'm going for Helping Hand and then Ancient Power and Iron Moth. Fortunately, this is all I can really do. Like, Go Goat puts a lot of pressure out that I'm not not, not unhappy with. Like, because it, it's nice to see Pokemon like Go Goat putting pressure down, but it's just something I can't really work with. Okay, the switch is quite nice. And back, back in comes Morgrem. So if we take a hit from the, from the Iron Moth, that's nice. There's a Terrastalization, so I believe that's Grass that's going green. Okay, now let's go Rock as well. So really playing around the idea that there's going to be a lot of Rock type moves coming out. Maybe just thinking because it's super weak to Rock. And like, just because I have that Fire Mode as well, like Rock just completely just ignores what I have. And Terra Blast as well. So amazing play for my opponent. Kudos to my opponent there, Gumi. Like, now going to Torkoal though, which is not the end of the world. Crit, mm, nah, Vegas can't be choosers, but. But we're here now. And then Ancient Power's gonna do like, it's just gonna like be a tickle, really. That yeah, does a chunk. Boost, Omni Boost, Omni Boost, Omni Boost. Nah. Um, and I can't safely go for talk on uh, for Fagzai now because they've basically covered every every possible play there. So I think I have to rely purely on the damage that Specs can throw out. 
and we'll get the speed boost from the Protosynthesis, so we can maybe try and hope that a Terra, that the boosted Moonblast is enough. Am I forcing, I don't want to force myself into that Terra so soon. So I'm just going to go for a Heat Wave as well, just to cover, like, something. There's the, that, that, I guess that kind of covers, that that's what the Heat Wave covers. Like, we're going to see a parting shot, we'll get Thunder. I, I couldn't really stop that. I I, I I couldn't stop that by all means. I think my, I think I've gone a bit pat like this seems to be a repetition of patterns in the Scarlet and Violet drafts that I've done, is that I get a bit power hungry with the first couple drafts. I, I get a very top heavy like A list sort of draft. And then when I actually apply it to the battlefield, it's like, is there, it, it, like, there's the theoretical synergy to my, a lot of my things. We have like a sun, a sun mode and stuff. But then I just, I, I face off things like this where my opponent can just carry one tech move or one tech to foundation that, that covers everything on the field. And with my opponent having Terra Rock and everything, has maybe read every possible outcome I can go with with my team. Just being like, you know what? This is what I can throw down. This is what I'm going to throw down. And of course, now that I'm locked in that moon blast, I'm paralyzed. I'm really have no pressure on that. I can just I can keep going for the damage but what do I go from that? Terra Blast is just gonna knock out Charizard. And Gogo can again can just look at the at the Flutter Main it'll drop. That's the downside to playing Flutter Main, like especially when you face the Pokemon that have like move or prankster. Flutter Main just gets fully paralyzed as well. So my opponent, you know, play playing it amazingly, getting a position where it's like, you know, I can have you be fully paralyzed, be slow on Pokemon. <clears throat> Something's gonna get knocked out. Something's gonna. Something's gonna have that pressure. And again, I'm I'm stuck in a situation where now I've got this Terra flying. And I I can't really do much. Like I can maybe try and go for the Stomping Tantrum and get, get knock out on the Moth. But then from there, it just I'm just pretty much a sitting duck. I'm basically just being like, you know, condol a, considera a consideration translation here at the end of the game. Just to kind of say, you know what, it's there. There's the energy, but also a little bit of pre a little bit of time to to hold on. Hall Neat as well. Don't take that as nice as I'd like to, but ho hum, stomping tantrum, we're not really overly attack invested. It gets the knockout still though actually. So um shouldn't doubt the quags I you know, everyone says a quiet desire, but I'm still very doubtful of this. With the only the one knockout, more Rem hovering in the back, we can just see like a paralysis now if that can't be par paralyzed. And Gogo being the tank that it is. And with Rock Slide, like we can maybe hope for Ice Punch freezes, but. Oh no, more Grim's gone, isn't it? Right. Um, in that case, yeah, we hope we hope for Rock Slide misses and Ice Punch freezes. There's Rock Slide number one. Oh no, we don't take that very well. Oh no! Oh, I spoke it up in the exact wrong order I wanted it to be. I maybe could have gone for recover there, you know, you got a little bit greedy, but... <sighs> Gonna go for that recover, but I think my opponent just has to hit that one rock slide. There it goes, and... Honestly, you know, Quagsire could have pulled through at the end there, but my opponent reading the books, every page of me there, perfectly. And game two was, was, was a bit closer, a bit of a tussle back and forth, but really really having that edge on at the end where it could have come down to either of those Pokemon forgetting the Pokemon that were in the back of course on my behalf but then of course Rock Slide does give us and Rock Slide does take us away and Gumi has gone and taken that week one off of us so congratulations Gumi amazing plays by you know tricking me into thinking that Don Dozo will be in there playing Zoroark perfectly on that turn one of game two and really giving me that edge so <clears throat> I look forward to my next few weeks in this league and I hope I can maybe pull it back a little bit better than I did in the video where I had that really slow start that really good run in the middle and then pull it back then pull it but I say pull it back I didn't actually pull it back in the end so maybe maybe this is just you know week one early days you know just just blowing off the dust that I didn't have and maybe the the, the sun crew the turquoise teddy Ursas can go through and take the rest of the season I'm really hoping for it but good luck, have fun to give me the rest of the rounds, and thank you to everyone who stuck around for this first battle. Hopefully it is only up from here.